Hey what's up guys, my name is Alone and today I want to go over how to tackle the whole Senyata vs Tracer situation in Overwatch using my own experience and in-game clips as a top 500 Senyata main with multiple accounts picked top 500 primarily playing Senyata. So as soon as you enter a game as Senyata and you press tab to see that the enemy has a tracer, your engages will be very different to how you would normally engage a fight and I'll explain why in just a bit. Keep in mind that Tracer is by far the biggest troublemaker for Senyata. If you play the Senyata vs Tracer duel poorly, you will not be able to have much of an impact as a whole in the entire game. The reason to why Tracer is such a good counter to Senyata and why she can shut down a Senyata easily that isn't very good at playing around her is because she can attack you from every angle and blink straight towards you to essentially one clip you without you even having time to turn around. She also has a very small hitbox and moves around extremely fast so even if you would live for a bit, hitting those slow moving projectiles on her twice or right clicking her without her living is pretty hard. But anyways, let's get into how to play around the Tracer and survive against her and sometimes even kill her on your own. So the first thing that you need to do is change your engage, which is what I mentioned in the start. This means that you need to repeatedly look at multiple different angles back and forth to see if you can spot a Tracer prowling about to plan an attack. It's always way easier to win a duel versus a Tracer if you know where she's attacking from. Learn all the different angles Tracers usually approach from and start looking at those areas of the map more frequently as you progress through the ranks. Blindly going straight in without looking around you is going to give you a pretty safe passage back to spawn making your team fight a 5v6 every time. So in the clip you just saw, I realized as the Senyata I was left alone in the back of my team, fairly exposed to a Tracer flank. I also do know the usual paths a Tracer would flank me from, which is the two tunnels to my left. I therefore started looking towards both of them to prepare for his engage. I managed to hit him enough with my right click for him to disengage and leaving me not having to fight him at all, which is definitely a good thing. You don't necessarily need to kill the Tracer, it's obviously a big bonus if you do, but just poking him to have him disengage is definitely enough. So let's get to the second thing. This is just a quick tip that doesn't need too much explanation, it's to charge a right click when you suspect a Tracer is about to engage you. Whenever you're either not shooting anything because you currently cannot see anything to shoot, you should be charging a right click. But it's especially important to do it when you believe a Tracer might be looking to attack you. Having a charged right click even without shooting them can scare off the Tracer to instantly recall when he engages you so that he barely gets any damage in with his first engage. This gives you three major things. The Tracer will have wasted his recall so his next engage he will not have it. The second thing is you know that he currently is trying to attack you so you should be way more on your guard. And the third and last thing is you might even see where he's coming from because you might see where he got recalled back to which is a massive awareness bonus and will most likely result in you living in that engage. And the fact that you could gain all those three good things by literally just charging a right click and not even hitting a shot on him is definitely always worth it. The next thing is movement. This one is fairly universal on some points across all heroes in the game, but with Senyata being an extremely easy target to shoot at with his round shape and massive headshot hitbox, movement is very important in a Senyata vs Tracer duel to survive. I want to divide the movements into three parts. The first part being don't ever stand still or go in a straight line. Even when you're not currently fighting a tracer or anyone for that matter and you're just standing at the choke spamming orbs at the enemy team, don't ever make yourself at any time a super predictable target by not moving at all or moving in a straight line. Secondly, when fighting a tracer, try to AD crouch spam while shooting left clicks at her as much as you can. This means spam your left and right movement keys to move quickly sideways with varying directions, meanwhile crouching repeatedly. And lastly, try to stay either far away from the tracer or in melee range. Don't fight tracer on medium range. Reason being is that on medium range she does a lot of damage and can close the gap to melee you as a finisher with her blink. But on long range she barely does any damage at all and your orbs do the same damage as they have no fall off. The benefits though of fighting her in melee range, aka as close to her as possible, is that you can utilize your melee, which with discord on her and her low HP pool does a lot of damage. A headshot into a kick is an to instantly kill a tracer that is discordant. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about is the big carry when it comes down to it, the discord orb. 
This tool is such a great thing versus a tracer. It scares the tracer off knowing that with this low HP pool being discorded at the same time, she can die extremely easy. A lot of the higher rated tracer players will hide behind the corner as soon as they get discorded to have it removed before they make the engage. Which essentially means you have to reapply it, but it's always worth it to do it in the beginning of a fight. It should always be your first move to discord a tracer as soon as he engages you or when you see her. It gives you a clear indication where the tracer is at as it essentially gives you wall hack on her for 3 seconds and if she does not wait it out before making her engage, she will most likely be blinking straight into that right click you were charging straight after applying the discord to her. So a good trick you can use after discording a tracer is try to position yourself in such a way that if she wants to reach you, she has to not walk into an area, but rather blink towards you to be able to reach you. That could mean hide around the corner while charging your right click and simply shoot the right click as soon as you see where she blinks at with the animation. So right now you can see the clip in the background where I discord a tracer and instantly put myself in a corner and she can only reach that by blinking out slightly in the open. I shoot my right click instantly at her blink position and she instantly has to recall and retreat. But yeah, that's going to be all I have to say about this Zenyatta vs Tracer battles that happens to every Zen player in Overwatch and hopefully with these tips you can improve at at least some aspects when fighting against the Tracer. Though keep in mind that the Tracer will still have an edge in a pure 1v1 fight in almost all scenarios versus a Zenyatta, but all these tips are mostly to improve your odds of winning the 1v1 or forcing her to back off so you don't even have to deal with it in the first place. But for now, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Whenever that happens, we will never know to be honest. But bye for now.